Welcome to Ageless by Rescue. This podcast is devoted to exploring the science of rejuvenation, uncovering the most trusted experts, the must-have products, innovations, and technology in the field of vitality, aesthetics, new beauty, and cosmetic enhancement. How excited am I to have the beautiful Samantha Jade on Ageless by Rescue. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. You are an Australian icon. And um, what I love about you is that you've owned your transformation. You've certainly done it on a public platform, but you've really owned your transformation and your playfulness with, you know, beauty, vitality, uh, your image. And I think that um, it's a really interesting place to start on that subject of agelessness. Have you had uh, the opportunity to see yourself as different roles and different images throughout, you know, your life? Yeah, I mean, I guess, like you said, I've, I've kind of always thought it was fun to play with different looks. And I'm so lucky in my line of work that I get to do that for a living. We get to go to many events, we get to do music videos, and that's a time that I can really be like, okay, let's change it up or, you know, cut a fringe or chop it all off or whatever it may be with my hair or, you know, different makeup looks. And I just find exploring different looks is, is um, it, it, for me, it brings a new character on for what I do. So I kind of put it towards my work. Um, in my real life, I guess I'm a little bit more boring with that kind of stuff. But I think that's because I do get to kind of show, you know, all these different sides of me in my job. I remember watching you on X Factor. And I remember from the first time you came on, of course, Australia thought exactly the same thing. So it's no revelation here. But I just remember thinking, oh, my God, she's going to be a superstar. Um, but I did think that they were going to the industry was going to envelop you and try to change your image a lot because it was so obvious you had star quality. But I thought, I bet they try to package her up. Um, but it was really nice to see that you evolved yourself. Can you kind of share with us the journey of being Samantha Jade, a contestant, you know, you, you'd had some singing experience, you were a dancer, but then Sammy J, the, the superstar. What was the journey and the evolution for you? Well, I had been behind the scenes in the industry for a long time because I had lived in the States for a very long time. And then I had kind of come home, I'd worked with my dad. I had kind of just, you know, music had become hard for me to listen to because it wasn't exciting anymore. So when I went on the show, I kind of went on as a blank canvas. You know, I, I even sang, even my audition song, it wasn't a genre really, it was just a beautiful song. It was acoustic guitar and a vocal. And I wanted the show and the judges and the audience to just see that I was there as a blank canvas, as a singer, someone who loves literally to sing. That, that's my favorite thing in the world is just singing with a guitar or a piano or whatever it may be with all the dancing and all the, all the, you know, glam aside. So I, I went on that show with that in mind, I think. And then I think through the show, you know, every week it was like a different look and different hair and my hair got bigger. Yeah, <laughs> it sure hair. did. <laughs> <laughs> so much teasing, um, so many pieces. And, you know, the clothes got, you know, I guess more daring and the heels got higher. And it was fun because that's always been a side of me. I, I love the, the pop star look. I love it. It's so much fun to play. Um, and then I think I kept evolving as, as the show kind of went on and then when it stopped is when you kind of get I think your ownership and you know you get to kind of make decisions and I, I was very lucky with the company I was signed to that I was really allowed creative freedom so I kind of could go I want to do this or I want to you know especially with Firestarter I mean that whole video there was a whole other concept and I was like no nah, I want to do this I want to do it black and white and that was kind of like they would you know, people were just like, no, we don't do black and white videos that I do as well. And I wanted it to be black and white so it looked timeless, you know, so you can always look back on it and, and really enjoy the kind of fashion side of that video. 
And then I think, yeah, it kept evolving. I, I went blonde. I tried a caramel look. I chopped my hair off. I, I just kind of play with it and have fun. But I think to your question, that kind of Sammy J thing, it's always been inside of me. I think that is just something that was allowed to be, you know, brought to the forefront through my confidence. And I think confidence is something you grow with age. Tell me, when were you aware that you had more than just a voice, that you were uh, going to also connect with people from your visual presence, from your beauty, from your vitality? Because you're more than a singer. You, you are quite iconic. And, you know, you, you're now an actress. You, you became uh, Australia's, you know, uh, young um, throwback to Kylie Minogue and you played Kylie in um, Never Tear Us Apart as well. That would have been a huge, um, I guess, uh, opportunity and slash identity kind of uh, struggle, right? It was, it, yeah, I got the remember getting the call and they were like, we want you to come audition to play Kylie. And I, since before I did the show, I used to work at this makeup um, place called The Makeup Store on Oxford Street. I worked there for a few months while I was kind of like in between the auditions and the um, next part of the show. And I was always, always told, are you a Minogue? You look so much like Danny because I had dark brown hair. And then people would be like, oh, you look so much like Carly. And I think it's my height too. I'm, I'm five foot, so I'm short. <laughs> and um, they're like, you speak like her. And it's crazy because, of course, I've been a fan of Kylie. I feel like it's un-Australian not to be a fan of Kylie. Like, she's the best. But I, I hadn't studied Kylie like I'd studied, like, Beyonce and um, Britney Spears. And those were kind of my people that I was obsessed with. Do you know, do you remember I met you at the Beyonce concert? Like, yeah. I don't know, eight years ago with Michael Brown. And yes. I remember thinking, oh, she's so oh. cute. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, that was one of the best nights of my life that it was day. wasn't it how fun was that but I I just always you know studied those artists so I was like how funny that I've got this you know this weird like same kind of vibe as as, as Kyle it's it, it was strange to me because I hadn't like watched a lot of interviews I knew who she was and I loved you know of course her music but I hadn't like studied her and so when it came to playing the role I thought that was a really good idea to show, like, I'm going to play her now. And then, you know, you can see how different I am when I'm being me. And, and I really love that I took that role. And I love that I got the opportunity to play that role because it really did that for me. It really kind of split the comparisons of this is me playing Kylie and then this is me as Sammy. So I, it was a great, that was a great role. And it was, I mean, I, I was so nervous. I can't even tell you the nerves. I had a stress rash walking in. And I wore a high neck because I get stress rashes on my chest and I break out in these red blotches. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm, I can't do this. I can't do this because I'm sitting at this table read with all these incredible actors and I'm a singer who's done a tiny bit of acting but not really. And I was like, I've made the wrong decision. What have I done? What have I done to myself? Um, and what I did was just made sure I did my research and I watched all of the interviews I could I, I watched everything and I just took on that role and I, I, I had so much fun. And then I went on to the Carl and Jackie O show and they were like, we've got someone who's, who's called in. And it was Kylie telling me that she approved of me playing her. So I was like, that's all I need. <laughs> oh, what an opportunity. Do you, do you think that women look for icons and archetypes when they're modeling their looks? Because, you know, the other archetype and style icon that you always conjure up for me, and I, I've heard said before is, you know, you've got that Bridget Bardot vibe as well. She was a beachy beauty, you know, and you're from Perth. So it's not a fast stretch. Um, but have you in your evolution of your style and image, you know, as a little girl or now as an accomplished, you know, performer and, and, and a brand, I guess, do you ever look back to icons or do you ever have muses that inspire your look um, and how you want to evolve your style and age? Definitely. I mean, I... I... I think that, that we all do it. I mean, it, it's even when you go get a haircut and you take in a little picture of who you want to, you know, get your haircut like, or you want your makeup done, you're like, like this. I still do that. I find, so who do you want to look like? I love, um, 
I love Bridget Bardot. I do love that look. I think that that 60s kind of look with the bit of, you know, teasing and the, the dark eye makeup and the nude lip. I love that look. I just think it's so beautiful on everyone I've seen it on. My mum actually used to do that. She used to do her makeup like that and her hair like that. And I think I actually just took it on from her. And I don't think I was even aware of who she was modelling it after um, until later in, in life. But I love Kate Moss. I love... Um, Bridget Bardot, I love um, Jean Trimpton. Like, I, I love those women who are just, it's kind of that effortless beauty. And, and that's what I, I like to do. Sometimes I, I can go full glam and usually on a daily basis, it's like a bronzy kind of look and, you know, my hair natural beach waves. But I think that's a really beautiful look. I also love the 50s really dulled, you know, Marilyn, I love playing with that. I did that in my earlier stuff at a song called Soldier and we went all the way with that Marilyn look and we did the hair and I even, um, when I went to the Logies when I was nominated, I wanted to do something fun and not just like look like myself. So I did the Marilyn hair and took on that look. I love playing with those kind of really glamorous uh, roles because I think how fun like this day and age you know everyone's in trackies and your hair's up in a top knot and you're a bit of a mess how fun to to be so glam like I love as a woman we get to do that and and the people that you've referenced are you know really ageless what does ageless mean to you uh, as as a woman as a brand as how you want your music to evolve well I always go back to my mum because she's my you know, biggest role model in, in life. And she she truly got more beautiful with age. She just got more and more and more beautiful. And she believed, um, <laughs> I remember she always said, I found the fountain of youth when I went to Sweden. So we went to Sweden on this trip. And she was like, everyone is so beautiful here. What is happening? I mean, they're just a beautiful looking race in general. But she was like, what are they doing over here? And we spoke to a lot of people um, in, in Sweden and ran, just my mum was such a chatterbox. She loved to chat. And they were all happy. And she was like, I think that's what it is. It's, it's inner. It's an inner glow. And so I think the reason she got more beautiful is because she worked on herself more and more and more and more. And it is that thing of inner beauty. It is outer beauty. I, I really believe that. And I think that she kind of had this hold on that and it taught me a lot. So I, I've always kind of done the work and I've always read, you know, self-help books. So I always look at quotes. I always think, okay, where's my skin breaking out? What am I feeling? What, what are those things? Feed my body with the right things. I, I think it's really, yeah, I, I think ageless to me is, is evolving, evolving as a person. Talk us through your um, routine because I think um, it's it's a lovely place to start the inner work. I, I think that's fantastic. I'd love to hear about you know what your um, you know wellness routine entails, what your mind routine entails, and then we can talk about the some of the surface stuff as well. Of course. Um, <laughs> well, I I kind of just I, I don't overdo anything. I just make sure that I'm in touch. And I feel like I, I know my heart, I know my soul, I know my body. I know when I'm a little off and I make sure when I'm off to kind of do the work. So I'll, I'll just make sure that I understand what the problem is. And when I'm feeling anxious, because I do go through anxiety, I suffer from anxiety quite a lot. And when I go through these like bouts of anxiety, I try and just kind of chip away at the layers and find out what is actually causing it and then try and do the work and, you know, go through it. And I think one of the biggest things about that is talking about it. I think people, you know, are, are kind of, there's a stigma around it or they're nervous to speak about it because it makes them not as strong. But I, I don't agree with that at all. I think weirdly you, you are stronger because you're dealing with something that's really tough every day trying to understand that part of you and trying to get through that. And so when I first kind of had my first bout of anxiety, I was really quiet about it. I was on tour actually. 
and I was having to go on stage every night and literally before I'd go on stage, I'd nearly have a panic attack and it was so hard to go out there. And then I'd go out there, I'd do my show, which was an hour and I'd come off and I'd be like, what did I just do? <laughs> How did I remember the Corrie? How did I remember the words? How did I remember anything? And for me, music's a healer, so it would take me out of it. But I felt that when I spoke about it is when I started to heal because everyone's gone through it. Everyone's going through it, especially this day and age where really, really, um, you know, we're, we're on social media. We compare ourselves constantly. It's never good enough, all of those things. Um, and so speaking to people who you think, you know, have it all together and don't, it's really nice to feel in a certain place with them, like connected to them. Well, all the studies and research shows that, you know, stress releases cortisol and cortisol is hugely aging and, wreck, you know, wreaks havoc with your skin, with your energy. So you can't do as much exercise. You, yeah. you can't sleep as well. You put on weight, you, you get breakouts. So I think, um, you know, managing anxiety and, and finding a way that works for you to have a control of, of that is really an excellent place to start from that. And what about exercising and rituals? Do you meditate? Do you have a sleep routine? Um, wh what kind of things are you doing from, from that space? I wish that I could meditate. I honestly have tried and I feel like this one time I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. And then I was out of it. <laughs> so that's something that's always on my news resolution list, like get into meditating, get good at it, put in the time. So that's something I definitely want to continue to work at. Um, I, I do definitely enjoy exercise. I think for me, it's mental health as well as um, physical. I just find that if I don't get up and get out of the house or do something that I'm just anxious and you know about to burst so I'm really lucky I have a little puppy who I'm obsessed with and um, I take him on a walk every morning that's how that's my daily thing I do it every morning get up have a coffee go for a walk get out and, and think about life and what I'm going to do that day and things that I'm working on um, sleep wise every I, I I'm a sleeper I love oh, yes. my sleep so nervous about having kids because I know that I'm not going to get sleep for a while so, <laughs> but I love my sleep I'm such a sleeper um Pat will sleep for like five six hours is fine I'm like I need my eight I just I'm obsessed with my sleep my mom was the same but every night before I go to sleep I come up and I have a diffuser and I put lavender oil in it about half an hour before I go to sleep so the room like smells of, of lavender and I listen to sleep music to put me to sleep it's um it's actually this sound uh, it's called like hzd 30 or something like that and it it's a beautiful kind of relaxing sound and i never remember the end so that means that i must fall asleep <laughs> that's fantastic i mean it's so important to have a sleep ritual do you have a morning ritual my morning ritual um this came from my mum that i started to do a few years ago she she said that when she woke up in the morning, it's really important to start the day with gratitude. And I really, really believe that. And so she said when she placed her feet on the floor, she would say, thank you. Oh, and so I love I, that. I know. And I so love she, this. It's so nice, isn't it? And when I was younger, I was kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, you, you don't understand the power of that. Um, but I do it every morning now. Every time I, I place my feet on the floor, I, I start with, with gratitude. I'm thankful for another day. Um, and then I basically do get up, do my skincare routine, get a coffee, go for a walk. Let's talk about the skincare routine because you have beautiful, glowing, gorgeous skin. Oh, thank you. Tell it's me all of it. I want to know it all. <laughs> <laughs> it's up and down with my skin. I feel like, of course, that time of the month, my skin breaks out just like everybody else. Um, it's taken me a while to find what works for my skin. I feel like I didn't think I had sensitive skin and I, I think I actually do. It, it goes red really quickly. I would always go on these like kind of um, whenever I'd go on holidays and trips and, and sit in the sun, I would always get those like skin rashes or sunburn and I'd be like, what is going on with my skin? Um, it turns out that I just have, um, I've got to be really, really careful with the sun. So 
SPF is like a huge part of my skincare routine. I start with um, washing my face. I love to wash my face. I, I get excited about my skincare. Like I I've become obsessed. Um, I use, oh my gosh, now I've got to figure out what, what the name is. Uh, Avenue, Lavenue, I think it's called. It's like a French. Avenue. Yeah, it's great. Uh, it's great for sensitive skin. It's such a good product. Because, Skin, yeah, and I found it in um, in France when I was actually in Paris, living in London. Went to Paris, forgot my skincare, started freaking out, and then realized I was in Paris and thought, I'm going to find something fabulous here. <laughs> and I bought the whole the whole collection, and I've I've loved the the face wash ever since the foaming one. Um, I use Rationale. I love Rationale. I became obsessed with Rationale, although it is very expensive. Do you so, do the whole six step ritual? I did the six step ritual for a while and then I was like, listen, this is a lot. <laughs> it's very expensive. So I kind of go in and out. Um, I use, I actually use just hyaluronic acid, the um, the ordinary. Everyone you know, loves that, don't they? It's such a good cheat. I mean, like, how can you go past it? It's inexpensive. It's yeah, it's affordable and it's it's concentrated, like it's the proper, it's what you need. Um, I use that and then I use, yeah, the rationale day cream i find i, I kind of was like budgeting and thinking to myself okay this is a little ott and so i kind of asked them what's the best part about this range and they were like the moisturizers so i do the day and night moisturizer right which i love um at night same thing wash my face and then hyaluronic acid and then my night moisturizer and then an eye cream what treatments do you like to have? Do you have laser? Have you had um, injectables? Uh, do you do needling? What do you like to do? Uh, you know, um, clinical stuff. Yeah, I'm really, really bad with this. I, I, I actually had a facial two weeks ago and the girl's asking me, she's like, so when did you have your last facial? And I said, I haven't had one in five years. And she was like, what? And I was like, I know, I'm absolutely ridiculous. And, and I... It's so bad, but I'll tell you why. Every time I've gone and had one, I break out afterwards and then I get nervous and I'm like, I know my skin, I know my skincare routine. Do you know what I do do though? I My mum always did this, hot water and a towel over your head and just doing that for like, she used to do it for, um, I think it's like you do it for what, three minutes and then you pull up and then you do it again. And her skin was unbelievable like people would could not believe she was her age so i do do that steam my own skin um but i'm gonna start going back and doing this facial because i actually loved it it was a peel it was a blueberry peel the cosmetics blueberry peel yeah it it's so good it's i good. loved it I actually yeah and it li listen it i did break out a little bit for the first like two days afterwards and then i was like oh my gosh now i get it <laughs> i get what this does like my skin's never felt so smooth that it looks so much better too i mean obviously there's a ring light but um injectables i've tried botox and i i did like it actually because i felt really lifted but i haven't had it for a very long time i don't, I don't do it often I've i've never had anything else I, that just because it just isn't for me, I have seen people that it's really worked for. I, I just, it's just not for me. Are you high maintenance beauty girl? You know, do you get your lashes done, your, you know, tanning, your teeth? What, what is your kind of high maintenance splurge? <laughs> I, um, I used to do my lashes, the, the um, extensions, and I did it for like a year, maybe two years. And I was like, I can't do this anymore because my real lashes were just, I think, kind of not as strong as they used to be afterwards. I also missed that natural look. I really, the older I get, the more natural I like my makeup and my How look. old are you, Sammy? I'm 34. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but the I mean, best is yet to come. Oh, that's what I, that's what I'm thinking too. But I, I, I used to love that kind of doll look all the time. And then I realized with those lashes, you can't have that kind of natural look. So I stopped doing those. Um, my teeth, I had them whitened like, I think three years ago and I'll never do it again because the pain was 
terrible, the little zings you get. Um, have you had yeah. um, veneers or have you done any dental work in your, well, you've always had gorgeous um, teeth. I have done dental work. I mean, I'm so scared of the dentist because I, I had braces when I was younger and I had braces in America when I was 15 and I was absolutely petrified because I was signed to a label over there that wanted me to hurry my teeth along oh. and so I would get my braces tightened every week and you're supposed to get them tightened every month so my teeth were so tender so I was petrified to go to a dentist for a very long time and then I found my favorite dentist dentist and co um, in Balmain Dr Sadi he is the best dentist of all time and so I've, I've gone to him and he does all my dentistry. I will not let anyone else touch my mouth <laughs> Dentistry is such an important part of beauty. And the more I speak to people, the more they say, you know what? I spent all my money on my teeth and you have Absolutely. gorgeous teeth. So what did you do for you? For your Thank you. Um, they're nice now, but I have very big teeth for my mouth. <laughs> That's what every dentist has told me. I had, so when I was younger, I had double eye teeth. So these teeth here, these um, eye teeth, I had two sets of them and one set were, were up here in my gum. And so I had to remove teeth for them to push down. That's why I have the braces. But for years, I couldn't smile because I was so insecure about my teeth. And so my mum and my dad were always like, you know, you should just smile because you're beautiful. Da, da, da. Fantastic parents. And I was like, I can't. I've got terrible teeth. They're like, get your braces. But then because that was tied to the record company and they tighten them so often, I had them off as soon as I can. And they kind of moved back. So these teeth that were next to my big, front teeth moved back and so when I was on X Factor and when I did even my first two music videos I was so 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 insecure just because I've always been insecure about my teeth so when I went to Dr Sadi he told me we could get veneers for next to my um, front teeth so I've got two veneers here and here um, which are just next to my my front teeth and so that's changed my life because they've just kind of brought my teeth to being a flat kind of line and I feel like I can smile I feel really confident and so anyone yeah that wants to do dental work I'm always for it I'm like go do it because you will smile you'll feel much better about yourself I know my confidence went up through the roof com compared to what it was before do you take supplements do you take collagen supplements or vitamins or do you have a, a kind of a dietary yeah. kind of routine that makes you feel energized or when you're on tour makes you feel like more vital yeah oh definitely when I'm when I'm working when I'm on tour and when I'm you know in the zone of um in cycle with my records I have to take things or I just I'm exhausted because the work is is crazy the hours are insane um so I take JS Health I love JS Health can't say enough good things about her products. They're so great. I take those vitamins. I used to take those collagen gummies. Oh, yeah. That was a while ago. I probably should go back to doing <laughs> that. I'm so bad with that stuff. So JS Health is like all I take. I take all four of her things. So that's the one thing I definitely do every day. <laughs> and in terms of water, do you have like any ritual uh, for your skin? I mean, you said skincare is your obsession, but do you do, you do anything else for your skin? Um, I definitely make sure I drink a lot of water. I have tea every night, um, a massive, massive, massive cup of sleepy tea. And I love it because it just it just puts me in the best calming mood. Um, yeah, water I make sure I drink. I make sure I drink at least, I've got this kind of bottle and I make sure I fill it up and have at least two to three a day. It's easy when I'm in the studio because you're singing so much, so you make you're making sure that your voice is is um, moisturized. But when I'm home, I do forget and I go for coffee too often, <laughs> which dries your skin out. Um, but yeah, water. I guess for me, I love fruit, so I make sure that I eat really well. I, I like eating well. I enjoy eating well I definitely have my days don't get me wrong I'm human love McDonald's here and there but very rarely what makes you feel ageless that's such a good question I think for me feeling ageless is that whole thing of age is nothing but a number and I truly believe that 
because I I just feel and I'm I'm quite spiritual. I feel my soul is getting older because it's it's knowing more and it's more in touch and it's understanding what life is and it's understanding the real meaning behind things. So I think that that's what's aging. I, I feel like everything else is kind of just getting you know more beautiful I, I I've gotten to the point where I'm like I don't mind having a, a few little wrinkles I don't mind that my body's changing I I think that's really beautiful it's showing that I've lived and so I I think that ageless for me is just evolving more than aging and what makes you feel really beautiful and powerful I feel I actually feel the most beautiful when my hair is clean and my skin is clean and I'm on the beach and my natural way like I just when I'm natural and I've got a bit of a tan (laughs) I just I feel beautiful in that moment because I I feel like myself and I feel like I'm not covering with anything so I can I can feel confident that that's that's really me, um, and powerful. I, I feel strong, powerful, and beautiful when I'm singing. I think that that is the for me that's the moment that I'm closest to my soul because I feel that's my true calling. Oh, I could, you'd absolutely come to life. I mean, you're gorgeous to speak to now, but I've seen you perform, and oh. you're right. It's a different, almost different avatar, and the energy level oh. is 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 really um spectacular to finish it off i'd i'd love to, you to share with us what would you like to say to your say 20 year old self and what would you like to say to your 50 year old self oh, wow my 20 year old self i would say it's going to be okay there are so many exciting things ahead because when i was 21 I lost my first record deal. My family had to move home. My managers then um, kind of ruined my life at that time. And and I truly thought my life was over. I I really, really did. At 21. (laughs) Yes, at 21. I know, my God. But I did. I, I was like, my life is done. I've lost my deal. I've lost my family has to go home. I can't support them. What have I done? I felt just completely done so I would say there is so much more to your life that you have no idea um, is coming and my 50 year old self what would I say I mean I'm sure my 50 year old self would say to me the same thing and so that's what kind of keeps me going Um, but I would say don't lose yourself don't don't lose yourself in in moments in life stay true to you and stay true to what you believe in it's been absolutely wonderful having this conversation with you I think um, it's it's lovely to hear it from different people's perspective and you've certainly been you know on the public uh, platform for so long it's nice to kind of peel behind the very perfect layer of Samantha Jade and and to make the woman as well so it's really an honor and a pleasure to have someone as lovely as you on the podcast. Thank you oh, so thank much. You I love it. Ageless is such a is such a great name because it's something that we as women, especially, I think, age is just something we're so overwhelmed with all the time. So it's really nice to speak about it and you know break it down. I think also in your industry and um, in my industry, which is the beauty industry, youth is fetishized. Um, oh. You know, it's like, who's next? You know, I watch, my daughter loves Billie Eilish and I've I've been watching the evolution of Billie Eilish and I'm I'm trying to navigate it with her, with my daughter and say, she's a very young woman and she's got so many different iterations of her beauty, of her sexuality, of her power and presence that she's going to explore over the next 20 30 40 years Lily and it's been really interesting for to watch her reaction as she pivoted from being you know the green hair slouchy yeah. clothes to the really sexy sensual feminine <laughs> blonde uh, Vogue cover um, yeah. and I think 
you know, it's it's interesting because youth is fetishized. Mm. We're told that our currency or our sensuality or our power or our beauty diminishes, but I haven't I haven't found that to be true. And I think it's nice to have those conversations with 17 year olds as it is to have them with 67 year olds. Oh, absolutely. And you can learn something from, from everybody. And I agree with you. I think it's so fun, the evolution of like, you know, people and what you go through in different looks. And even when I look back at old photo albums of my mom, I'm like, oh my gosh, she had red hair, she had blonde hair, she had brown hair, she had, you know, she did all these different makeup looks and how fun, how fun to go through all of those things. And, and it be, we're in such a great day and age for that stuff too. We can just do whatever with our looks and it's so fun and it's so great that it's so accepted now too. Yeah, it, it is, it is. And I, I, it, it's nice to have the conversations and, and to tell people, you know, even Samantha Jade didn't feel beautiful, you know, oh, and that, yeah. and she's worked on the things that she does love about herself. And from that, the confidence grew to try and experiment with different things. And yeah. I think that's what Ageless is about, the confidence to experiment until and that we're always just evolving. So it was, again, such a lovely conversation. I absolutely loved having it with Thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please share and rate this episode. I'd love that. 